Hey there, my friend. This is Dr. Anthony Balduzzi, founder here at the Fit Father Project and the Fit Mother Project. In today's video, I wanna cover five of the best leg exercises that don't hurt your knees. Because let's face it, as we age, and most of our clients here at the Fit Father Project, Fit Mother Project are over 40. They're in their 40s, 50s, 60s. And at that age, we oftentimes have this bone on bone situation in our knees, this osteoarthritis, where through the wear and tear of life, we have problems with our knees, we feel pain, we have some inflammation. And the point of this video is to give you five exercises that can still give you good leg workouts, but are easier on your knees. And this is not to like diagnose whatever is going on with your knee. You may have osteoarthritis, but it's very possible you could have other injuries if you're looking at this video. It's important you go check out with your doctor to make sure you know what's going on. Going on. These exercises though that I'm going to show today are good for just general wear and tear. They help you strengthen that knee. When you strengthen those muscles around that joint, it can help reduce and alleviate some of that pain. And overall, these exercises are going to still give you good bang for your buck and good activity with your muscles. So we're going to hop again to the gym here. I'm going to give you five of my exercises. I'm going to show you the form points of these and I hope that you can apply this into your life and get better results, stronger legs, and less pain. Let's hop into the gym and let's go right into this video fitfatherproject.com. All right, so let's get into these five best leg exercises. They're gonna be easier on your knees. Now, before we get into the first exercise, I wanna talk about uh, the philosophy and category of the two different types of leg exercises. There is one type of leg exercise that involves flexion and extension of the knee. This is what may be causing you problems. So if you're on like a leg extension machine, that may cause pain. Oftentimes when we're doing squats, there is a lot of flexion and extension of this knee joint. That is one type of exercise. The other type though is a hip hinging motion. So we're here, the knee doesn't move much, but we're hinging from the hip joint. The knee is staying in a very similar position, but we're hip hinging, something like a deadlift. This is gonna be easier on your knees. Here's the first key point. And our first exercise is gonna be the dumbbell deadlift because we can keep the knee in a fixed position. We're not causing that flexion and extension stress on it. We can hinge at the hip and still activate those glutes and hamstrings and some quads too. So dumbbell deadlift is our first exercise. To do the dumbbell deadlift, you're gonna get two weights. You're gonna put them uh, just outside your feet. Now, you don't need to bend all the way down to get them just far enough where your legs are in good position and the weights are right here. You're gonna pick them up, you're gonna stand up just like this. This is our starting position. Now, at this point, I want you to take the weights and bring them to the front of your body, just like this. It's very subtle, but just to the sides. And now, as I come down, I'm keeping my back and my core tight. I'm dragging those dumbbells nice and down. My knee is not bending too much just right here to where it's comfortable, you feel a stretch on your hamstrings, then you're gonna reverse it, squeeze your glutes and your hamstrings and stand right back on up. Head's in good position, coming down. That knee is not moving too much. This is coming, the, the motion's coming from my, um, from my hips, using my glutes and my hamstrings, and you will feel this on the backside of your legs. Very good. And only go down as much knee bending, as much knee bending as feels good on you, right on up. So this exercise is great. You can use it with light dumbbells. You can do it with heavier dumbbells. And you want to have the right amount of knee bend that doesn't hurt you. If your knees hurt when you get to here, then stop above that and just make them a little more of this stiff deadlift kind of style. I would recommend you do three sets of these anywhere in the eight to 15 rep range. Very good. That's our first exercise. Our second exercise on the list is going to involve some flexion and extension of the knee joint itself, but we can do it in a way that targets one leg at a time and is not that much flexion and extension. It is called a partial split squat. We're gonna pick one foot out front, I'll be working this leg here, and we're gonna put a second foot up behind a bench somewhere. You honestly don't need to elevate the foot, but it will give you better results by doing so. And so we're elevating a foot, it could be on anything, a bed, a bench, a chair. I'm gonna take a quick hop out, and now I'm here. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a squat on this leg, except make sure that you're not squatting where this, this knee tracks over the toe. This puts more tension on that knee. What we wanna do with these squats is to sit back just a little bit, just to a partial, to the point where it doesn't hurt your knee and come right on up. So it's a partial split squat. Come down just a little bit, feel that glute, come right on up. I'll give you a different angle. So we're out here on front. This other leg is back just like this. I'm loading this glute I'm keeping a lot of tension right here, and I'm coming back just like this, and I'm feeling tension on the leg. I'm not going down so far, this might hurt my knee here. I'm stopping right about here, and I'm doing these partial reps. Short, but you're gonna feel so much tension. The reason this is effective is because we have all the weight on one leg. So, just doing this right here, 
is gonna activate the muscles with that amount of weight without you needing to go down as deep to get the benefits. I mean, you'll feel it. Even holding your leg just here in this position, you're feeling your glute, you're feeling everything, and you don't have that much motion from the knee. You don't have to go all the way down like a normal squat. So that's a partial split squat. These are challenging. You may need to start as something like this, where you just do something like this before you actually get up on that elevation. Either way, do as many as you can. Stop by say one rep short of failure. You'll do one side, you do the other side. You only may need two sets of those, uh, two sets each side, it'd be very good. You can follow these up from the deadlifts. Quite frankly, you could do this whole routine that we're covering here as a full knee-friendly leg workout. On that note, third exercise, kettlebell swings. So. I'm gonna show you these in just a second. It's basically I have the kettlebell here and I'm firing it right on up. What does this look like? Well, it looks like a hip hinging motion. The knee can stay pretty fixed. Don't need to aggravate the knees with this kind of flexion extension. I can just do boom right from the hip. So I'm gonna take a kettlebell. I got my fun gorilla kettlebell here. It's right here. I'm gonna move to the side so you can get a good view. What I'm gonna do is keep this very tight. Kettlebell's tight right here in my crotch. Core is tight. I'm gonna hinge at the hip. I'm gonna start swinging the kettlebell nicely. Knee doesn't move that much. Kettlebell comes higher. You can see my knee moves just a little bit and I'm using those glutes to fire the kettlebell right on up. I am not trying to shoulder raise this kettlebell. I'm hinging and I'm firing through. The kettlebell comes up, I'm using my core to control on the way down firing up through. Very good motion, start light. If you do not have a kettlebell, you can also do it with a dumbbell. Just hold it just like this, get around here. Same concept applies, hinge, swing, arms stay straight. Feel like you're using your glutes to fire through. Glutes and hamstrings. I would like you to go a little lighter on this, especially if it's your first time doing these. Make sure it does not hurt your back, which means you gotta keep that core nice and tight and do higher reps. Try to do 20, 30 reps of these. Don't go heavy until you um, can get a little more comfortable and you've done these for a while. High reps, really good for burning fat. Kettlebell swings, exercise number three. Exercise number four is a modified sumo squat. I love these, and these may not be right for you. They might hurt some people's knees, but if they do work, they're great. So what we're gonna do is take a single kettlebell or a dumbbell. We're gonna get a wider stance. When they call these sumo squats is because they have a wider stance to them. So I'm wider than shoulder width, feet are slightly turned out. I'm gonna come down just like this, pick that up. So I don't have to come down quite as far, and I'm only coming down as far as it doesn't hurt my knees. I'm trying to keep my chest up, and I'm coming right up here. I'm doing more of a partial. So let's say your knee hurts just right here, stop above it, no pain. Don't train through that pain. Even this right here and this smaller motion is fine. If you can do the full motion without knee pain, amazing. Do the full motion. Have that thing touch at the bottom. This is great too. This is totally fine if you can't do them like this. But if you need to stop partial, good. This is almost like a hybrid between a squat and a hip hinge because I'm still slightly hinged to my hip as I'm squatting and you'll feel this. If you even do pulses with a heavier weight just like this, my knee doesn't move, need to move nearly as much as a full squat. Very, very good. This exercise, I would say you go slightly heavier because you want a nice heavy weight pulling you down and I would say you probably do this in maybe the five to 15 rep range. Depends on how heavy you go obviously, but I would say three sets here would be really wonderful. Our final exercise involves no weight and it's amazing. It should be safe for almost everyone. It's called a standing abduction. So abduction is an anatomical term for any time we're moving any of our joints and our appendages away from the midline. So this is a standing abduction. I'm taking this leg, I'm getting on one leg and I'm moving this leg out and I'm working this glute. There's small muscle here called glute medius, glute minimus right around here that are moving this leg out just like this and I'm coming slightly back with it. So it's coming out, slightly back from another angle. Get my balance on this one leg, out, slightly back. Out, slightly back. Feeling this good contraction at the top, just like this. Out, slightly back. You can have your hand out, hand at the side. The key is to feel this glute work. Out, slightly back, you're gonna feel it. Now, if you're a little worried about your balance, get a bar, get a broomstick, put your hand on the wall, something like this that you can rest on. The key thing here 
is that you're coming out slightly back. You want to really focus on that contraction just through here. It's an amazing leg exercise. You'll do one side until it's a super big burn. 10, 15 reps. Do the other side just like this. Leg comes out, back just like this. You should feel your core activated as well. This oblique will be activated as you do this. Just like this. Good contraction, slowly lower. So you can do two sets of this until it really burns. Might be around 15 reps. Very, very good. So these are some amazing leg exercises. Hopefully all of them work for you. Maybe they don't. Maybe only some work for you. Really good things to incorporate. So again, dumbbell deadlifts. We kept that knee without moving too much. Partial split squats just right here. Make sure that knee does not track forward. We're sitting back just like this. We had kettlebell swings, popping it with the glutes through here. Then we had those modified heavier sumo squats. And then finally, we had standing abductions just like this. Five main leg exercises. You can do these in rotation. You can do a couple one day, a couple another day. This will help strengthen your legs. And if you do have some osteoarthritis, that bone on bone stuff, by strengthening these leg muscles and so right around the knee joint, you're gonna be helping yourself out a lot. You'll have more strength, more stability, and in time, hopefully, less pain. Hope you found this valuable, my friend. If you want a step-by-step -step health and fitness program that covers the nutrition, the workout program, supplementation, and my team and I personally keep you accountable, scroll below the description, check out our Fit Father and our Fit Mother programs. We give you everything, and we have all the modifications to make it friendly on your knees, your low back, your shoulders, and of course, we give you the nutrition too, and the supplementation that'll help rebuild that cartilage in that knee, and keep you very healthy. So. That's it, my friend. If you enjoyed this, found this valuable, give us a thumbs up, hit that like button. It helps send this video all across the internet, all across YouTube, and it really helps our channel grow, and it helps get this video to more people who need to see this just like you. And if you enjoyed this, hit that subscribe button. You'll get access to hundreds of our free videos. I think we have 500 plus at this point, so you'll get all of those. They'll show up in your little YouTube news feed. Very, very good. Definitely hit subscribe, and drop a comment below if you found this valuable. If you like this, if there's an exercise that you're gonna go plan trying, and if you do try it, come back here, let us know. We'd love to chat with you, and of course, we'd love to have you our programs too. All those links are in the description. Thanks for being my friend. Again, my name is Dr. Anthony Balduzzi, founder here at the FFP and the Fit Mother Project. We'll see you around our channel. We'll talk to you very soon.